Hey everyone, welcome to the shot with Cosmos with Cosmos. Fuck it. Today, uh, we salute spaceship. 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 Yeah. Cheers. Ah, could we go first? <laughs> All right. So the first recorded instance of spaceship, a uh, space toiletries, if you will, occurred not in space. Uh, but in fact, it was Alan Shepard on a launch pad aboard Freedom oh. 7. Oh. So it was the first American launch into space. It was supposed to be a 15-minute flight. Uh, basically, get in the capsule, wait 30 minutes, launch, land, and you're done within the hour. Um, Everyone does. Yeah. 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 And of course, space always launches on time. Always. Um, time. So it went as planned. No. Um, he ended up waiting, I think, a total eight hours in this capsule. Oh, my God. And when you don't plan on using the bathroom for eight hours, you don't plan accordingly. Yeah. So shortly into it, he was like, I got to go pee. Burn the bomb bra eventually got up to him. He goes, no, you got to stay in the capsule. You can't get out and use the urinal. Okay. But I got to go pee. So the engineers get together and they say, you know what? Just go pee in your suit. So indeed he did. And the cotton undergarments soaked it all up. Oh, delightful. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> And then it's like it went all the way down his back. He uh, made a crude joke about it. And, uh, you know, uh, but this is all in the official transcripts. Uh, but after that, uh, they kind of figured that astronauts need a way to go. Yeah. And so one of the ideas that was floated uh, was using the same method, yes, as the U2 Spain, uh, space, oh, sorry, U2 spy plane pilots do, uh, which is a catheter going down the urethra and then having a bag on your side. But that was not a popular option. Yeah. No. I, yeah. <laughs> no. Would imagine that. Yeah. So instead for Gemini and Mercury, they uh, settled on a containment belt and a plastic collection bag. As they do. Okay. Um, now the bag was actually bigger in space than it would normally be on Earth. And that's because the bladders work a little differently in space. Oh. So on Earth, you have gravity, which settles everything uh -huh. down. So when you feel that pressure, you know it's time to go. Uh -huh. But in space with microgravity, um, it just expands until it's fully loaded. And then you're like, I got to go. And then you just unleash like the most pee you ever had in your life. Wow. <laughs> so the bag was a little bigger. Um, and then eventually just came to like diapers, for example, as well, just, just in case. Yeah. Um, but that was still for short trips. For longer right. trips, like the Apollo missions, they needed a different method, a different containment method. Can't wear their huggies on the whole day. No, that would start smelling bad. So enter the Apollo fecal containment device. Yes. Uh, basically, the astronauts. ASCD. ASCD. Basically, the astronauts would go into the command console, uh, which had a little more privacy, a little bit, and then they basically had a strip, and then uh, put on the containment device to the backside. Oh, oh. Yep. I the old bag. Takes on a whole new meaning, meaning of captain's chair. Hey, <laughs> nice. So the urine could be ejected back into space. Um, in fact. Some astronauts, yeah. they saw the urine go out, and because it froze immediately and glinted in the sun, it's they like said, pea crystals. Pea crystals, yeah. They said these pea crystals was often like one of those beautiful sights because it's like frozen shards in the sunlight mm. in space. Uh -huh. um, now, once the material was inside the bag, uh, the astronauts had to add a germicide pouch, a germicide pouch into the bag uh -huh. itself. Uh, just in any case of like microorganisms got out yes. and became old. Yes, yeah. this is the beginning of a horror movie. Yes, that's fun. That's a shit. That's a shitty movie. <laughs> yeah. Now, one of the most famous excrement moments took place on Apollo 10. So here's the official transcript uh, brought to you uh, for the first time by a live reenactment by the Cosmos of Cosmos crew. All right. Mike and Liz, you have your lines here. Oh no. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So, right. so let's go ahead and do this live. Uh, this is Apollo 10. Oh. Who did it? Who did what? What? Who did it? Where did that come from? Give me a napkin. Quick. There's a turd floating through the air. I didn't do it. It ain't one of mine. I don't think it's one of mine either. Oh, I gave it to him. Mine was a little more sticky than that. Throw that away. God almighty. <laughs> Same. So again, that's the official transcript from Paula Town. <laughs> And overall, on the moon, 96 bags of fecal matter, urine, and vomit were left on the surface. Vomit. Vomit, vomit. folks. Vomit. You know, oh. People get sick. There's zero gravity sickness going on. It takes yeah. a couple of days. You know, vomit. 
So that was the Apollo missions. You have your fecal containment bag. Uh, now let's go to Mir, which was the right. Russian capsule in the 80s and uh, space station 80s and 90s. So one of the fun, they had kind of like a toilet with a suction cup thing. We'll get to that in a moment. But what struck me as, oh, that's a fun word. What struck me as kind of fun here is that Mir, the urine was ejected into space, just like the Apollo missions. But um, because, you know, the frozen urine was hitting the solar array. So when the mirror was decommissioned, it was discovered that the panels were operating at 40% efficiency because it, was, because it was damaged by the pea shards. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Whoops, a daisy. Oh. And now if we move to the space shuttle, mm -hmm. happening at the same time as mirror. Um, so we didn't really talk about the toilets, and they're catched with the toilets, literally, is that in microgravity, um, fecal matter doesn't really drop. Yeah, okay. It just stays there. Um, so you had to have the waste collection system. I'm sorry, I'm just realizing fully what that means. Yep. Right. <laughs> let, let it soak into okay. you there. Soak that meaning right. in. <laughs> so the WCS comes equipped with a footrest, hose, and a four-inch hole. And there's a bit of suction on the system that allows a direction for the waste to flow. And of course, there's a curtain for the WCS system. And on the walls of this curtain, you have little wet mats, very important, always fully uh, stocked. Yeah. Uh, trash bin, um, scraper tools, oh, no. funnels, and friendly instructions. Well, oh, yeah, fun, well, for, you know, yeah, everyone. Yeah, just and, and like on the mirror, mirror, the urine on the space shuttle was also ejected in space um, with some foreseeable consequences. Like in 1984, it became an issue. It was found that the urine had frozen onto some thermal tiles that could damage it upon re-entry. Wow. So, in perhaps the greatest hour, uh, the Canada arm was used to scrape the frozen pee off the TPS tiles. Wow. Okay. <laughs> now we have the International Space Station. Uh, again, suction toilets, things like that. Mm -hmm. And in 2020, a new toilet was installed, the Universal Waste Management System. Ooh. Came in at $23 million. Ooh, that's for development, installation, all the whole stuff. Probably the most expensive toilet currently in use. What? Yeah. Well, not quite. Um, okay. And there's a nice little lid, a uh -huh. seat, and better compatibility for female anatomy, which is great. Uh -huh. Now, considering the ISS conti is continuously occupied, uh, the urine isn't stored, it is recycled. Ah, uh, yes. Drink that big. Yeah, Drink it. 90% right. of all liquids um, on the station is recycled, including urine and sweat. And as astronaut Jessica Muir says, today's coffee is tomorrow's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, thank you, Spaceship. And follow us on Dream Cosmos, Cosmos Cosmos, all the things. Enjoy your day. Cheers, everybody.